Like we both. He's looking at. You're a little closer to the camera than him. Then yeah, you move over. I'll scoot this way. So. Oh, I figured. All right. I have my glasses because I'm blind. You know, I have my my, my wife's glasses too. That's the that's the funny part. Everybody Put your wife's me. glasses on so everybody can see them. <laughs> the the my grandbaby loves them. She thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. I put them on. She goes, and she just smiles. Really funny. Anyways. Yeah, my wife would be really proud of me because I didn't shave before I came here. So she's like, you look yeah. like a bum. Yeah, like, and you put her glasses on. Her glasses, no shaving. It looks great. It's a good Monday. It is. It's Monday. That's why we don't shave and wear our wise glasses and drink Diet Coke. Got it. Got Still it. not sponsored. Started. Still not sponsored. Hey, my name is Darren. I'm one of the pastors here at Connection Point Church. And welcome to The Wrap. I am with Pastor Chris Vault, Lee Pastor here at Connection Point Church and... This weekend, before we get into the totality of what this weekend was all about, you preached on, you're taught on, your message was about uh, generosity, which, you know, so everybody's favorite subject. Everybody's favorite. And uh, and so, but since this was the last, I'm finally correct, the last of the- uh, It only took us two weeks to get you here. <laughs> the uh, of Our code. Um, man, why don't you just talk a little bit about, because I was asked a couple of times, uh, and I did explain it, but I'll let you explain it since, you oh, know, since, you're, since you're the guy. <laughs> um, um, if you had to tell somebody, explain to somebody, you know, exactly why we have a code and uh, and why we settled on the ones we did, uh, what would you tell them? Mm. Well, values or your code values is, is kind of like the guardrails as you're going down a highway, mm -hmm. right? And we're on a journey following Christ and trying to live out the purposes of God. And you've got to have direction. Mm -hmm. You've got to have guidance and you've got to know what keeps you going down the lane mm -hmm. with integrity, uh, staying on missional purpose. Um, it's easy, especially in American Christianity. It's easy to see uh, in the name of Christ, churches or ministries getting off track. Mm -hmm. It's easy to start, going toward our preferences or our opinions. Mm -hmm. And God didn't call the church to organize the local congregation around preferences or opinions or philosophies, but to be gospel-centered, making disciples. And then when you study, okay, so what, what were the values that guided the early church? What were the values who guided New Testament Christians? What did Paul teach? Mm -hmm. What did Peter teach and James teach and John and so on. These principles that we settled on, you find over and over and over again in the New Testament. And we believe that they give us a well-rounded, uh, mature focus um, to keep us directionally focused mm -hmm. on the mission and on the kingdom. Um, I mean, it's clear. Jesus said the only reason he came to this earth was seek and save the laws, and, and that's our mission. Yep. So evangelism has to matter. It does. Uh, but at the same time, discipleship's got to matter because we're making disciples, not just leading people to Christ, but now we got to develop them, right? And we could go right down the list, and you see these are biblical values that you see in the New Testament church, whether it be love or excellence or generosity, as we talked about uh, this weekend, uh, being mission-minded, ministry-minded, mm -hmm. all of these principles guide us to stay focused on the work of the kingdom. That's what Jesus called the church to be about. We need these because in humanity, we will drift. That's right. Mission drifts. And we have to have biblical values that keep us focused in the right direction and don't allow ourselves to get off in our own preferences. No, that's right. We have a we have our core, which is connect, grow, go. That is, you know, that is our that is that's our the mission. That's, that's our mission. Yeah, and so it, a it's a little restated. it's a little bit broader. And so in order to laser focus it a little bit, mm -hmm. in order to keep our, uh, our 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 mind on a little more narrower scope or path, right. is where the code comes in. It kind of it kind of takes those that connect, grow, go, and and opens it up a little bit and yeah. allows people to see the totality of what the mission is. Yeah, I mean, you think about it like this. Like a, a moment ago, I started using a, a road analogy. Connect, Grow, Go is the Great Commission restated, yep. just in three simple words. That is our map. That shows us where we're supposed to go as a mission, as a church, right? These principles that 
they're, they're the ones that, it's like the GPS that keeps us on the right track mm-hmm. so that we get to the end go. It keeps us from getting off the curb or taking a wrong turn somewhere with a preference or an opinion. And it keeps us focused to head to uh, the direction of the mission, you know, the Great Commission, fulfilling it, connect, grow, go. That's right. So we did the uh, we you were, you did the uh, the uh, politically savvy thing, and you started out with <laughs> with uh, <laughs> with the mission minded one, you know, evangelism matters, yeah. eternity matters, right. and uh, and then you ended on the the most favorite, which of course is generosity, right? And uh, you, and you began in in uh, Corinthians, which is interesting uh, mm-hmm. because in Cor- Corinth, you know, they had fell into all kinds of of, um, of sin, I guess, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word, right? And it's interesting that besides repent and uh, and and deal with the stuff going on inside of your own church he also pointed out that something that you pointed out mm-hmm. that they evidently were were not very outwardly focused they were right. mostly inwardly focused and whenever you're inwardly focused things can disintegrate around you real quick yep um you've got to take first corinthians and second corinthians yep. together Right, and know that they're written at different times, but the, it, Second Corinthians is like a continuation. Mm-hmm. So in First Corinthians, Paul is dealing with sin that the Corinthians had allowed in the church. They were extremely yeah. inward focused, right? They almost became a little click. Second Corinthians, Paul is having to come back like a spiritual father, yep. and he's having to um, reprove them. Now, they, they've repented, and they've yep. tried to make some changes, but then they almost went too far to the other extreme. And, yeah, like you said, but but they were so inward-focused as a church. Paul's had to teach them about generosity and showing grace to someone else, helping others and not just being worried about themselves. The church of Jesus Christ was never intended to be about the congregation within you know, that local congregation only. It's that local congregation then reaching out in the love of Christ and making an impact in the community and the world around them, spreading the gospel, not containing the gospel. And so we know Paul used an example of another church that he helped that has been helping, whether he founded it or not, didn't really matter, but he, he's been helping and guiding. And don't you know that has to make you feel really good? It'll be like mm. my mom writing me a letter and saying, you know your brother. He yeah. does these things so much better than you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he has less gifts than you have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not only you're more talented and all this, but he does so much more with what he has and what you do. Yeah. I'm not real proud of you. But that's the way Paul was yep. writing to the yep. Corinthians because he's telling them, hey, up here in Macedonia. Yeah, it's tough. They, they've got a lot worse situation yep. than you have. They're, we don't read about spiritual giftedness of that congregation mm-hmm. like we do the one down in Corinth, right? Uh, and yet, yeah, Paul is saying, but I'm telling you that I'm so impressed by this yeah. congregation in Macedonia. Do you know what they're doing? Uh, they are reaching out in their extreme poverty. I love the word, yeah. the language that Paul used. Their extreme poverty has brought about an overflow of generosity. And so from there, as he unfolds um, and kind of talks about how the, uh, uh, the northern part of Greece was being very generous despite they're overcoming tons of obstacles, even more, even greater obstacles than the southern aspect of them had, mm-hmm. the uh, part of Greece, because they had less. They not to mention they didn't have more foreknowledge. In other words, the uh, the northern part was mostly uh, Gentile, mm-hmm. and so there was very few Jews in right. that aspect. So they didn't even have the luxury of at least being familiar with with the teachings of old. Right uh, where uh, where of course most of the of the southern uh, the people in Corinth and Rome. In those areas, they were mostly former Jews that converted. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but say all that to say, um, uh, so do you think this was more of a, whenever you, you were teaching, I looked at it less as, of a correction of corn, even though it was, as it was, and a, uh, as him telling everybody and how proud he was and what was going on up in, uh, in the northern part of that uh, territory. Yeah, I mean, I love I love how Paul says, I'm testifying yep. about Macedonia, right? He says, I testify that, and then he goes on to explain. And when you read the passion in the way yep. he wrote chapter 8, um, yeah, I don't know that it was as much of, hey, you guys are not doing this correctly, look at Macedonia, as much as it was teaching the Corinthians while bragging yep. on uh, what he was seeing in Macedonia. You yeah. know, it's like 
it's almost like reverse psychology. It, you know, it it's like when we teach a child or something, uh, principles that we want them to learn, but not so much about saying, Hey, you're not doing this right. But Hey, did you see what Billy did over here? Mm. Did, you, did you see what Sarah did over here? Wasn't that amazing? And you're hoping it catches on a little bit. Mm. Uh, I think that's more what it was. And then he says, and, and Titus, I want you to make sure you guys excel in this. So he's using Macedonia and not, not to condemn the church in Corinth, but mm-hmm. to motivate them. Yep. Cause they were progressing. They'd went from, like you just said, from, from outright sin, uh, into a kind of a, a different type of they weren't mobilized, it's probably a good word. They weren't seeking, they weren't. They're still a very immature yeah. church. Yeah, because if you read, if you go into Galatians and other places, and Philippi specifically, uh, where we learn a little bit more about the uh, that great offering that was taken by the northern uh, part of uh, Macedonia, the um, they were uh, they were literally, that wasn't Paul begging them. They no. were literally led by the Holy Spirit, right. a.k.a. this year's entire thing. is They heard, heard the, Holy Spirit. The, the voice of God, yeah. and they did something about it. Right. Exactly right. And so if you had to expand upon that, how does hearing the voice of God and giving or generosity kind of, how do they link together? Well, I think you have to tie it to the first point that we talked about yesterday is that their generosity was a response to grace. Mm-hmm. And and where does grace, uh, where, where do we become so influenced by grace that it would cause us to respond? It's by turning our eyes to the Lord and looking at what he's done for us, which then leads into worship, right? Mm. So think about this. The deeper we grow in our relationship with Christ, the more we passionately seek him, the more we are in all of what he has done for us, the easier I think it becomes for us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit speaking and leading us. Mm. So here's these churches in Macedonia. They're under incredible persecution. They're very poverty-stricken. They have nothing as far as the world is concerned. There's no hope for them in this world, but they found hope in Jesus. And isn't isn't it amazing that some of the folks who have it the hardest on this earth are the ones who are the most passionate for Christ? Mm, Yeah. And so they are passionately worshiping. They're passionately seeing what God has done for them and the grace of their salvation. And I believe that is why they were so much more in tune to the Holy Spirit to speak to their heart and say, hey, you've got brothers and sisters who are struggling right now, and I know you're struggling, but out of what you have, Mm -hmm. reach out and do for them what they can't give you back in return. Yeah, no, it's a very powerful uh, um image to see to, to when you read all that to see what they did despite their current situation um, and then you kind of started unfolding a little bit more uh, on like uh, uh, why generosity matters uh, mm-hmm. as to you as a Christian and that is more than just um, like even I guess I kind of hit on it a little bit whenever I did I talked about serving a couple weeks ago was it's not necessarily something for when we talk about serving, we, mm-hmm. we as people probably think, "Hey, you just need this for the church, right? Yep. You just need this done." For, it's not for the church per right. se, right? Yeah, right. There, are you taking care of something in the church when you serve? Yes, you are taking care of a need, hundred percent true. But it's it's it is something between you and God more than anything else. Sure. When you serve, you're serving God. When you give, you're giving to God. Oh yeah, you know, and I love that line in Second Corinthians where Paul says to the church in Corinth, and it's a beautiful teaching moment here. He says, they gave themselves first to Christ and then to us. That's right. They gave themselves first to Christ, then to us. So Paul is making it very clear that they weren't just giving. One, they're seeking Jesus, and they're so in tune to him that they can hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And when they hear his voice, even in that moment, it is given back to the Lord, and they saw their service to the others as an act of their worship to him, right? That's right. So they're, they're giving themselves more to the Lord and then reaching out to those who are around them. Mm. What a beautiful picture of that we can learn for ourselves. That's right. Right? I mean, because Jesus said the church was to be salt mm. and light. He said we're to be a city on a hill. And some folks think, well, that just means we just need to go out and do good deeds. But if we're just going out and go, doing good deeds on our own, then we're the master of our own ship. We're, we're setting our own course. And only God himself sees in his sovereignty all the pieces around us. Mm-hmm. How much more impact will we have 
using our gifts and talents if we first went and sought the Lord, allowed him to burden us and to convict us and to enlighten us on what we need to be a part of, where we need to go, Mm, who we need to speak to, how we need to reach out in generosity or whatever the Holy Spirit's guiding. He knows how to put all the jigsaw pieces together and create a beautiful picture of grace. Because I know you spoke about Matt a little bit um, in your message as well, and we don't randomly just throw because we, as you, as if you're not part of a Connect Point Church, when we do our Make a Difference offering, it's one time a year. We don't harp on people about giving here. We talk every every message we give, every day, every service we give people opportunity to give what we're right. supposed to do. But at the same time, we don't harp on things. But we do once a year. We do one massive. Uh, 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 you know, reach into our, to our faith and like give, you know, yep. a little above, a above and beyond gift, yeah, right? sacrificial gift. And, and then out of that, we give as a church, we give to other uh, ministries or other uh, areas that are doing things for God. Or we feel, and that's a, here's the key that we feel like the Lord is leading us to. Absolutely. We don't just throw it randomly against the wall. No. No. And I think that's kind of what you were just saying. God's not expecting you just to randomly throw your money around. It's not no. like that at all. No, I mean, we don't just sit around and say, hmm, I wonder what organizations we can sow money or seed into. We pray about it. As a staff, as elders, as a leadership team, we pray about these things. And, and, and you know, what I love about our church is, is we, we make sure we do that through our weekly giving, mm-hmm. and we support, and we give back, and we help out. With the as our congregation is faithful and money comes in above and beyond budget, we're able then to sow even more than what we planned. With Mad, ten percent automatically yep. is going to go back, and we're going to give out in places that we feel led of the Holy Spirit. And we pray God show us locally, show us nationally, and show us globally where you want us to seed. And we have a couple of staples that we do every yep. year. We have some orphans in Belarus. Yep. There's a Bible college in Davao City, the Philippines. Uh, we support the Forever Marriage Ministry yep. Group that is raising up marriage coaches here in our community. And, and, and then Teen Challenge, because yep. we God has given us a, a, a just incredible connection there. Yep. And But then every year there's also others that aren't the year-to-year staples. Because we truly are trying to seek the Holy Spirit on, okay, God, where do you want it to go this year, right? Where do you want us to go now? And not just mad, and right. maybe there's folks that don't know this, not just our weekly tithes and offerings, but even in our cafe sales. Yep, I was going to mention it. Yep. Yeah. The cool thing, and a lot of folks may not realize this, uh, when you buy a coffee or espresso drink or whatever you buy at the cafe, we only keep the amount of of what the cost was for us just to supplies to buy the supplies for Correct. the coffee and the cups. And we've got that down to a science. We yeah. know like down to the penny where that number is. Everything beyond that, anything that people would say is profit, we give it away. That's right. Every quarter. And the cool thing about the cafe leadership is is they do the same thing we do as a yep. whole church. They pray about where they are to invest God's money at that moment. And so every three months, man, we're writing a check out of the cafe proceeds to someone, yep. uh, some ministry, some organization that's helping people in our community. And you know, so there's so many ways that CPC is being generous. But the key is what you was get alluding to. It's praying about it and seeking the Holy Spirit where yep. that's supposed to go. And there are a ton of people out there, and this, this is not a – going to pull a paw here and not tooting the horn or anything, but if we could – there are so many stories out there that we could share about people who have been impacted. Not just – you know, we have those that have been impacted individually. So mm-hmm. we have, we as a church have helped people through tough times. Uh, we don't talk about it, you know, because it's people's private business, and we're just right. trying to be, a you know, and help our people who are going through a really tough time. Uh, but we also, through those organizations that we have given to, a lot of great stories have come back to us. Um, and so, uh, you're making an impact every time you give in whatever way you give, whether it's mad, Absolutely. whether you buy, whether you buy a, a, a latte or however y'all say that. And or, then, uh, or one of these caps, buy, every the merch, time you buy some merch, same deal, all that, all of that uh, is helping somebody yes. somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, and it could sometimes, yeah, sometimes it is just, uh, helping people who 
find their way here, mm-hmm. uh, get, giving us an opportunity to, uh, like if they bring a, a handful of children, they get to go in children's church, and then we hear right. the stories about how a whole family's worth of kids gave their life to Christ. Amen. It's, and it's amazing. And that's what giving does. It helps. It's a part, we call it partnership. Right. And, and, you know, one of the exciting things that we know in-house yeah. that many of our viewers won't know this, but we're going to tell them right now. Because uh, you just mentioned how it maybe an entire family gave yep. their heart to Christ because they started coming to church off of, you know, because we reached out in some yep. local organization financially, they heard about our church or whatever it may be. Since we've opened the um, the 1130 worship experience, mm-hmm. almost weekly, this is amazing to me, for the last probably month or more, uh, when we get together as a staff and we talk about, okay, what did God do over the weekend? Who came to faith in Christ? Who signed up for baptisms? Whatever, you know, as we're looking through what God is doing in the moment so we can make preparations, almost every week the kids department comes back and tells us of children who had given their heart to Christ. And they will say, I know Pastor D did this past week. He said, hey, we had... So many kids give their heart to Christ again this week, and we was all bra- you know praising the Lord. And he goes, guess which service it was? 1130. And so it's just like even, even stretching ourselves and making the sacrifices this summer to open another worship experience, week after week, God is saving children for Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and not, even, not even children, this past Sunday, which always amazes me, uh, because we even give an invitation when we're preaching on generosity, right. right? In the 1130 service yesterday, after the service, I'm out in the lobby greeting people, and one of our Care Connection prayer ministry leads uh, men came to me. He's just so emotional. He says, Pastor, I just got you to know, even with you preaching on generosity today, a 15-year-old mm-hmm. who was in service today just gave his heart to Christ, and we just prayed with him, and he prayed to receive Jesus. That's awesome. So he prayed with me during the service, and then he went to Care Connection afterwards and confirmed his salvation. So how cool is that, right? I mean, that's God moments yeah. right here, even when we're talking about a subject no one wants to talk about. That's right. So it's interesting that our our, our 10 codes, so our least favorite code somehow or another impacted our what we consider our most important code, you know, the uh, evangelism. the evangelism or eternity matter. Mm-hmm. So they all interact with one another. Yeah. Whether we understand it God or not, so they good. all interact with one another. Well, if you had a nutshell, mm. uh, in a in you know a quick, not a pastoral nutshell, because pastor nutshells are <laughs> really big. If you had a really nutshell, it a real small one, small okay. one. How would you wrap up and and put a bow on uh, on generosity as it impacts a Christian? Yeah, we need to change our perspective about generosity. Yep. And we need to see generosity as an act of the gospel, mm. an act of the grace of God. It got proven out this week. It got proven out this week. Genero- when we're being generous, yep. you know, verse 9 in 2 Corinthians 8, Paul gives the reminder that generosity, the greatest example of generosity is the Lord Jesus Christ became poor that we might become rich. Mm. Yep. You know, be, by his coming to the earth, we now can become sons and daughters of God. And that's what I hope and pray we see change yep. in the lives, at least of the people at CPC, and hopefully those who watch this that don't go to CPC. Christians everywhere need to start seeing generosity uh, as an act of grace and something that we should look forward to and be proud of and not say, <laughs> not look at with disdain. Yep. This is an opportunity to show grace. And again, we said in generally, as always said, whenever we're uh, somebody's when the host comes up and they take the offering, um, they they should say it just about every time. We are partnering with you. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. this is your opportunity because a lot of us don't have the opportunity to speak to a lot of people and to share the gospel uh, on the reg on a regular basis. But this is you partnering with us, so we can so we can as a group of people go into these far reaches of the earth, these local places regionally, and people are being impacted by our little bitty bit. Because I know you know our little bit because we know. We've said this a many times. We're 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 both just a couple of rednecks, and God just does crazy cool things, uh, despite our redneckness. And yes, it's a, it's kind of it's kind of inspiring because it's like he gets the glory if he can do it through a couple, Kentucky, Arkansas. We're talking rednecks. God bro. can do. He can do anything. anything. <laughs> That's just fact. <laughs> Trust me. I know I'm stupid, and so he's smarter. But 
He's he's more redneck. That's <laughs> that's just fact. Anyways, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the rap talking about rednecks, and uh, because that's what we do here on the rap is be a little loose. But I, mean, I hope you guys really, 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 really yeah. grab a hold of that message Absolutely. of generosity because I think it's been spoken throughout this entire ten weeks, and even back into the the this message series before. Uh, like Daniel, he did the, he just was obedient to God's vo- voice and hearing, he heard the voice of God and did what he did without any expectations yes. on it, but no expectations really. He just did what he knew to do and God blessed it. Amen. And, uh, and I believe that's exactly what's happening here. And we hope your life is blessed and we hope you t- tune in next week. We have a new message series starting. That's what's it right. going to be on as for me and my house, it's going to be a family series, as four for weeks looking at Joshua house. chapter 24, man, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. We'll yeah. see you next week. Doodles.